In this video, you will learn five simple tips that will make your man more attached to you. These tips are based on solid psychological science and are designed to strengthen the emotional bond and attachment he feels for you. So if you're dating someone and you really want to bring him closer, then this is the video for you. Don't go anywhere because we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borrello and I'm a psychologist and a relationship coach. This channel is all about helping you build great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love. So if you're interested in making your love life the best part of your life, start now by clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you aren't missing anything. Okay, on to the five things that strengthen your man's attachment and connection to you. Oh, and one of these tips is something so unusual and controversial I've never talked about anything like this before, but it could be a game changer. So make sure you watch the whole video so you can decide if you want to try it. But first, I need to quickly explain attachment theory and what it means to be attached to someone. So attachment theory is an area of psychology that describes the nature of emotional attachment or emotional connections between humans. Attachment begins in childhood and is essentially the bond that forms between a baby and his parents or caregivers. Having an attachment figure is critical for healthy development because it provides a baby with a secure base that protects them. It provides for their needs and helps them to regulate their emotions. It is the attachment figure that helps to soothe or calm the infant. Think about what a toddler does when he's afraid of a stranger. He hurries back to his attachment figure and he holds on to their legs. So this attachment behavioral system is in place to ensure the survival of helpless infants. But what does this have to do with getting your man emotionally attached to you? Well, as it turns out, the attachment that develops between infants and caregivers is a function of the same attachment behavioral system that bonds or attaches romantic partners. In other words, the same physiological systems that attach babies to their parents is responsible for attachment in adult romantic relationships. And this attachment develops and is strengthened in much the same way through the same processes. Okay, now stay with me here because this is where it gets really good. On the surface, it might seem kind of weird. I mean, the bond between babies and parents and the bond between romantic partners doesn't seem very similar. They seem to be different types of relationships. But let me give you some examples of the similarities. So in each of these examples, Think about how babies and parents interact with each other, and then how two people in romantic love interact with each other. For example, both feel safe when the other is nearby and responsive. Both engage in close, intimate, bodily contact. Think about how we hug and kiss babies. Both feel insecure when the other is inaccessible. Both share discoveries with one another. They learn new things about each other. Both play with each other's facial features and exhibit a mutual fascination and preoccupation with one another. And both engage in baby talk with each other. It's crazy how similar these interactions are. Well, that's because they are all interactions that are a result of attachment. And attachment is facilitated by the same physiological systems and the same powerful neurotransmitters or hormones, specifically oxytocin, are used to form that attachment. So oxytocin is released in great amounts during labor and childbirth, and that facilitates the bonding between infants and mothers. But oxytocin is also released in adults through physical contact, sex, and orgasm, and that facilitates the bonding between romantic couples. And the most exciting part, when oxytocin is released, the positive bonding and attachment effects on couples is profound. For example, high levels of oxytocin is associated with feelings of love, sexual desire and bonding among romantic couples. And oxytocin is the hormone responsible for the rose-colored glasses that make your partner seem so perfect when you're falling in love. And oxytocin prevents you from becoming close to other potential mates and help to maintain fidelity. Think about how you feel when someone suggests you date other people when you're falling in love. You don't even want to. It would be a waste of time. Yeah, that's oxytocin as well. And oxytocin has been widely studied scientifically. In fact, artificially administered oxytocin has been used in human experiments and found to be effective. For example, men in committed relationships who were administered oxytocin through a nasal spray viewed their partners as more attractive and they stood further away when interacting with an attractive female stranger. 
Also, nasally administered oxytocin has been shown to reduce stress and increase feelings of trust between partners. So without a doubt, oxytocin is an important and powerful hormone that facilitates attachments between a couples in romantic relationships. And the best news, there are things that you can do to trigger the release of oxytocin in your man and facilitate and strengthen the attachment between both of you. So without further ado, here's number one. Number one, physical touch. The best way to get more oxytocin in your life is with physical touch. Non-sexual cuddling, hugging, and even shaking hands gets oxytocin flowing. So connect with your partner, hug and kiss every morning and night, and make sure they are good hugs. You should hold a hug for at least six seconds to get the happy chemicals, oxytocin, and serotonin flowing. This is sure to boost your mood and his mood and promote bonding. Also, it's important to know that the amount of oxytocin in the brain changes moment by moment. That means that keeping the oxytocin levels high is an ongoing process that should be repeated throughout the day. So again, make sure you're having plenty of physical touch. Hold each other longer, hold hands and stay close. Number two, the look of love. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul, but it turns out they're also the windows to the heart. There have been many studies on how nonverbal cues from the eyes affect our behaviors towards one another. And simply put, gazing into another person's eyes has been shown to trigger the release of oxytocin as well as other neurotransmitters that are associated with bonding, attraction, and love. Similarly, increased levels of oxytocin causes couples to gaze into one another's eyes for longer. So it works in both directions. Eye contact releases oxytocin and oxytocin increases the duration of eye contact. So when you're with your man, make it a point to gaze into his eyes and hold that gaze for three to four minutes. I know it sounds silly, but trust me, you will immediately feel these effects and feel closer as a result. Number three, give him a massage. Massage is one of the best ways to get oxytocin released into the body. In fact, massage benefits both the person giving the massage as well as the person receiving the massage. Both show increased levels of oxytocin and you don't need to be a professional at it but simply spend 15 to 20 minutes massaging your partner and you will both experience an increased feeling of closeness and attachment. Again, many studies have shown the effectiveness of massage in helping to reduce everyday stress, enhancing the immune system, and generally making people feel more healthy and relaxed. And many of those benefits are directly related to the oxytocin increase that's associated with massage and physical touch. So make it a point to give him a massage. It really works. Number four, physical intimacy and sex. It has been well established that physical intimacy and sex causes both men and women to release oxytocin. And as such, they are both more likely to develop a bond and become attached. For both men and women, oxytocin is released due to the physical touch and closeness involved in sex. Oxytocin is released when gazing into each other's eyes and oxytocin is released when hugging and kissing. So physical intimacy and sex certainly increases oxytocin. However, there are some very important differences between how and when oxytocin is released in men and women. And here's where things get interesting. Women produce more of this hormone and in particular, a surge of oxytocin is released when a woman has an orgasm. On the other hand, when a man has an orgasm, the main hormone released is dopamine. So instead of getting a surge of oxytocin and wanting to cuddle more, Men receive a surge of simple pleasure. Now you know why he's not so into cuddling after. So if you want to take advantage of triggering oxytocin in your man, make sure you engage in plenty of foreplay before having sex. The more hugging and kissing and gazing into each other's eyes, the more oxytocin that is going to be released. So having those quickies with him probably isn't going to help that much with the bonding process. Instead, make a deliberate attempt to lengthen your lovemaking session and include as much physical contact, hugging, kissing, and gazing into each other's eyes as possible. Okay, now the next one is where things start to get really interesting and controversial. I mean, I almost didn't include this one at all, and that is number five, oxytocin supplements. If you look into the research on oxytocin and adult attachment, you will see that in many of the human studies, Participants were administered an oxytocin nasal spray as a way of artificially increasing oxytocin levels in their brain. 
And what's even more exciting, this nasally administered oxytocin did in fact increase oxytocin levels and also have profound effects on behavior. Not in one study, but in many studies. Just Google oxytocin effects on men and you will see so many research studies using this method of administration. In other words, the nasal sprays used in these studies worked. So what does that mean? Well, because oxytocin is a natural hormone produced in the human body, it is widely available as a natural supplement as well. And if you do a quick Google search, you will see that there are many companies that are selling oxytocin nasal sprays and other supplements that are purported to increase oxytocin. And this is where things get interesting and controversial. Let me also say this, I have no affiliation with any of these products. I've never tried them or even heard of anyone who has. I have no idea if they are legit or if they even have oxytocin in them. I actually just found out that they existed while doing research to make this video. However, if these products legitimately contain oxytocin, theoretically speaking, they may be effective in increasing the bonding between you and your man. Having said that, imagine asking the guy you're dating to take a hit of an oxytocin nasal spray because you want to bond with him. It's unrealistic, right? However, if you both wanted to increase your feelings of attachment, perhaps you could try them as a couple. Well, things are about to get a little crazier. There are also oxytocin perfumes and sprays that might have a similar effect. Yes, as it turns out, there are companies that make perfumes and sprays that are said to contain oxytocin. Now, just to be clear, I have no affiliation with any of these companies and I have no idea if their products even have oxytocin in them. I do think that they're interesting to think about, and theoretically, they might even work. But before you go off and start Googling these things, there are a few things to think about. First, there are ethical considerations here. Is it right to spray yourself with oxytocin perfume knowing that it might have an effect on how he feels about you? I suppose if you told him that you were wearing a perfume that's going to make him attached, he probably wouldn't even believe you. But is not telling him okay? And when he finds out, is he going to be okay with it? And would you be okay with a man who used oxytocin cologne before going on dates with you? It's crazy to think about. Here's the second problem. If you're using this perfume, your level of oxytocin is going to be spiked even higher than his. I mean, you're wearing it and you are going to become more attached as a result. So be careful what you wish for. Nevertheless, if these perfumes are real and effective, they really could be a game changer. Anyway, I really want to know what you think about this topic. Would you ever consider using a perfume or spray like that? If so, would you do it without telling your partner? And if your partner used that on you, what would you do? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this. I can't wait to read them. By the way, a good friend of mine just started a family channel on YouTube and they're hilarious. So if you want a good laugh, check them out by clicking here. I'll see you in the next video.